So good morning, everybody, and happy 4th of July. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few minutes today's eDrone. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and we're gonna dive right into this. A couple of days ago, we picked up the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So pretty exciting. Uh, just to let you know, we bought it through Drones Made Easy. They're the folks who create Maps Made Easy and Map Pilot Pro as well. So not sponsored by them, just giving them a quick shout out because they did a great job at getting the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise to us really quickly. Now, the other day I did a quick sort of unboxing for you. And so today is part two of us getting set up with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So this is brand new to me. This particular controller is completely and totally brand new to me. And after unboxing everything and charging the batteries, there was a um, there was an instructional sheet on here saying you know to get the battery to wake up go ahead and plug it in and charge it and then you're going to go through a quick setup process once that setup process is done it kind of looks like an android so what we're going to do we're not going to play with any of the buttons here today we're just going to take a look at the overall interface here and i'm just going to power this up and so one of the things that I couldn't do and I couldn't, I could not record the initial setup. The reason I couldn't record the initial setup was because it was walking me through a series of questions and, you know, setup questions, that kind of thing. One of the nice things for this built-in interface here is that you can actually do screen recording. So I'm going to set this up so that we can take a look together. And so I'm just pulling, pulling down on the remote. We've got a different screen here right now, but I am going to do a, uh, a recording on screen so that we can go through this together. So I'm going to tap the recording button, and now the controller is actually recording for me. So I'm going to be spending more time looking down at this, but I will be checking in up here on screen as well. So the first thing that I noted is that the DJI Flight app with this one automatically comes up. So I'm going to close it really quick and you're going to see that on screen. But so when I first turn on this uh, this controller, um, it does pull up the DJI Pilot 2. So I'm going to go ahead and tap in there. And when I'm looking at the main screen, it sure does look like Android to me. Now, what we're seeing right now, I'm just going to move my, um, my uh, antennas there as well. So the first thing that pulled up for me once I got everything set up, answered all their setup questions, was the... Um, the controller app, and that's the DJI Pilot 2. Sorry, I'm going to have to keep looking at this because i got the DJI Fly app, the DJI Go 4 app, we've got DJI Mimo, we've got a couple of DJI products. But, so the initial screen is what you're seeing right now um, for the DJI app. On the left-hand side, we have a Fly with Caution and RID, Remote ID, and we are in an E2 airspace here. So that's where the warning is coming from. On the left-hand side below that fly with caution, we've got a flight route planner. So I can sit down and start planning flight routes. This is one of the reasons why um, we picked up the Mavic 3 Enterprise was so that I could pre-plan missions for our clients. We already have a lot of clients with pre-planned missions. And one of the other things with the M3E is the fact that you can use some third-party apps. And we're going to get to that but let's not jump too far ahead. I know you want to jump ahead, but we're going to get to that. On the left-hand side, continuing on the screen, we've got an album. Right now, we have no images or video, so there we go. Uh, in the middle of this, we've got a not logged in for their cloud services, and they do ha have several cloud services. I'm going to give it a tap. So one of the options here is the Flight Hub 2. Have not played with this yet. I know it's supposed to be out of beta, but it doesn't seem to be out of beta yet. So we also have DJI Smart Farm, Open Platforms. I'm not sure what some of these things are, so we're going to have to figure that out. And we have a customized live stream. So could I live stream from this? We'll have to find out. I think the answer is yes. I'm going to arrow back from the cloud services. And then finally, over on the right-hand side, we have link to an aircraft. So right now, my drone is powered off. It's actually still sitting in the case because I wanted to take a look at this primary interface before we, you know, go charging in further. There's a couple other buttons here I want you to take note of above link to the aircraft. We have DJI Care. I did purchase the two-year care program. What's interesting is when I tap into this now, the DJI Care, I'm not connected to the drone, 
So it doesn't believe that I've signed up with DJI's Care Enterprise yet. When the drone is hooked up, so I did a little testing yesterday, when the drone is hooked up, it does show me my Care Maintenance Plan, um, my Care Enterprise Plan, excuse me. But when I'm not connected, it's treating it like, hey, I'm still new to this and I need to sign up. So that's a little confusing to me and I'll try to work that out over time. But we're doing this live, we're doing this together, we're playing with this here. So, all right, we're gonna arrow that back. And we also have upper right corner, a little button that said normal. So when you are connected to the drone, um, you will see all of these boxes filled in. So it'll be connected for each of these things. So propulsion, avionics, visioning, uh, vision positioning, batteries, etc. Since we're not connected to the drone right now, we're not seeing any of that. And we're not gonna charge in in this section to hooking up the drone and going, oh yeah, see, we proved it. We'll show you that later when we hook it up and start walking through the drone. All right, let me arrow this back. So that was under the upper right hand corner with the normal. Also, sorry, you know, I don't have a little uh, tap icon here to show you through this. Um, so that's why I'm describing where it is, left, middle, or right side. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the camera view. Even though we're not connected up to the drone, we can take a look at the camera view and there's some pretty interesting information and things in here. So it comes up with the pre-flight check. So that's kind of interesting to me. It's gonna show you your drone connection, your battery, um, the remote controller, which is at 98% right now. And then we've got a lot of additional items here, like uh, return to home, right now it's blanked out, max altitude, blanked out, signal lost, blanked out. When we're connected to the drone, all of these are gonna fill in, and then you can update these as well for your obstacle avoidance, your horizon, horizontal and vertical um, sensing, all those types of things. So right now for me, um, you know, we're not connected at all, but it did give me that pre-flight check. If I close the pre-flight check, we are in fact in the application. So here we are, if we were connected to the drone, we would see feed from the drone, but we are now in our control menu basically. On the left-hand side, we have a couple of items, and I think the one that's most interesting to me on the upper left corner here is the little one that looks like a little S-curve with some flags in it. Well, that's where we're gonna be setting up some of our pre-planned flights, our waypoint missions. So it also shows where the drone controller is, lower left corner. We don't have a drone feed right now, so I don't have video feed from this. Over on the right-hand side, um, we got an info button, a center on your location, a north lock, um, your layers, and then you also have a measurement tool there. Um, let me see. That's not a measurement tool. I'm not quite sure what that one does, and we'll check it out once we're <laughs> hooked up to the drone. Upper right-hand corner, you'll notice that we have uh, it's showing that the RC is not connected to anything. We don't have the battery information for anything. But I did want to show you in the upper right corner, we do also have our main menu settings. So if you're familiar with DJI apps, then this might look very familiar to you. So we have a bunch of flight controller settings and on the left-hand side of the screen uh, before the map area, um, we've got our flight controller settings. So home point setting, um, return to home altitude. So it explains all that, maximum altitude and maximum flight distance is locked in at 500 feet right now. When we connect the drone to this, as I tested with yesterday, um, we'll be able to reset all of these. Signal lost action is on hover right now. We probably wanna put that on return to home. And then we've got coordinated turn. This is something you're gonna to have to go through as well. So while I'm showing you this, this is an initial reaction to it and some initial testing, but you're gonna to have to go through and check all of your settings and be sure to check all of your settings when the drone is connected. Because I've noticed that some things reset when I disconnect from the drone. So in addition to that first one, we have our obstacle sensing uh, setup and so obstacle avoidance. So we've got a lot of features in here and that's also gonna be one of those things that you're going to want to take a look around as you get to know your M3E as well. All right, next one, controller. So we can change some of the remote controller settings. We've got the control stick mode, um, our remote controller calibration, if we need to calibrate it, customized RC buttons. So one of the things that I was after with this as well is the fact that we have custom function buttons. 
Below here, we've got a little toggle joystick, and then we've got a little circle option in the upper right corner. So there are a lot of RC buttons that we can customize for ourselves. So with one click, we can get to where we want to be on a different function on the drone. Also, we use the custom function buttons to do things like drop waypoints and drop points of interest. So if you're thinking of something like a litchi, um, you can also drop waypoints with the waypoint mode on the M3E. So by the way, I'm going to keep calling it the M3E because Mavic 3 Enterprise is a mouthful. So there are a ton of different customizable settings here. And once again, you're also going to need to connect up to the drone to see some other custom functions like using the C1 or C2 key to drop a waypoint for yourself. Since we're not connected to the drone right now, we're not going to be doing that. All right, the next one. Here comes our image transmission settings. So right now, not applicable. I'm not connected to the drone. There's a recurring theme here. Sorry about that. We'll speed that up. Um, but you're getting the idea here. So we do have the aircraft battery, smart return to home, customize your battery warning. So all of these things you can set up as well. Let's go down to the gimbal settings. And as you can see, nothing in them because the drone's not connected right now. Finally, we can come down to the common settings. So map switch, um, units. So do you want to do imperial? Do you want to do uh, metric? It's up to you. Also your GPS format as well. So there are still several more buttons and things in here, but that is the overall main interface. So it should look very familiar to you. And when we do get the drone connected up, we're going to be going back through that area because we do want to take a look at what other features we can set only when the drone is connected. I want to arrow back on this now. And so Nice little arrow buttons at the top on the Android setup, so I kind of like that. Gets me back to my last screen. One of the things that I'd only mentioned here, but I want to just get you thinking and get you enthused for what's coming up in the near future, um, the flight route over on the left-hand column, I'm going to give that a tap. So you can create a flight route so we can tap away on the screen. This screen's a little small for doing mission planning. I really do like utilizing... Um, websites for doing some of the mission planning like uh, Litchi's Mission Hub or Drone Harmony's network connection or uh, Map Pilot Pro's connection where you can sync things but we can in fact tap out routes here and we're going to find out in the near future because this is one of the big reasons I bought this so this is super important my ability to create pre-planned -pre missions for my clients that I can reuse over and over again as we're doing some of these time-lapse sites. And I want to be able to plan them not just on the application, not just on this small controller, but I want to be able to pre-plan desktop as well so that I've got saved files for the flight plans that I'm doing. Seeing that we have the KMZ import is incredibly encouraging to me because I can crank out some of my mapping areas on QGIS and then create a KMZ file and clearly I can upload that KMZ file to this remote controller, and then hopefully we'll be able to easily and quickly lay out our flight paths for our clients in the drone application when we start blocking things out for our flight paths. So that one is very exciting to me. It's right up front. There it is. Import that KMZ file. Now, in addition to walking through this, I also wanted to give you a heads up that we will be using third-party applications here. So I'm going to be checking in with the folks with MapPilot Pro, and I'm going to be checking in with Drone Harmony as well to see where they're at with this. Um, since I've done work previously for Drone Harmony, I can uh, get a quick answer from the folks there. And they give quick answers anyway. So if you're thinking about working with Drone Harmony, it is a great application. Once again, we are not sponsored by them. We're not sponsored by anybody. But if you would like to sponsor us, feel free to get in touch, especially if you're with the company called Hydroflask. I still love these water bottles, and I make my fake little plugs for them here and there. So those of you who've been here for a while, you know that. All right, now I'm going to swipe up on this really quick, and I see that I've been recording for 12 minutes, so I want to cut this off shortly. But we're going to go ahead, and as you can see, I just slid up that DJI window, and I'm just going to slide it up to the top, and we are now out of that DJI window. What I wanted you to see on the main screen, so here we are on our Android screen, we do have a gallery button. We have files where files will be saved. 
we have Firefox for web browsing. We've got our settings so that we can, you know, change brightness, uh, you know, indoor, outdoor brightness. You know, this screen can become extremely bright. So this is going to be very interesting to see when we're in the field because I've been used to having iPhones and iPads connected up to my drone controllers. I'm going to see how well this performs in the scorching summer heat that is starting to ramp up here in Arizona. By the way, everybody down in Phoenix, sorry to see your temperatures, guys. Hang in there. All right. So we've covered just about everything in here. Very simple. If you're used to Android, then you're going to know your way around the system really quick, really easy. If you're like me and you're not a heavy Android user, you'll still be able to find your way around. Now, as I'd mentioned, I'm excited about the third party apps. So one of the things that we're going to take a look at in an upcoming video is actually getting Map Pilot Pro and getting it installed on this controller. So be sure to like and subscribe here. Be sure to stay tuned. And this video is also going out to our Teachable students as well. And you guys are getting some extras in the new Teachable class that we're doing on the M3E. But for everybody on YouTube, we're not going to jump far ahead. So we're still going to bring you along for a lot of this process. All right, everybody, I'm going to stop this one right here. And then we'll pick up a new one. And we'll start talking about getting the um, Mavic 3 talking to the controller and we'll take a closer look at everything. After that, we will jump into loading some third-party apps and finding our way around the third-party apps on this particular controller. So we'll see you in an upcoming video, everybody.